Welcome to the launch of the Boss R254K photoelectric sensors. These photoelectric sensors were released and they are part of a new uh, philosophy that Balif has called SAMS. It stands for Smart Automation and Monitoring System. These sensors were created as sensors, but we were able to include the functionality of SAMS. And a lot of this is based off of the recently released Balif con condition monitoring sensor. Um, there's a large number of additional functions and additional information that's available in these sensors uh, that's even beyond what's in a condition monitoring sensor. These sensors were designed to be standardized. So for instance, as I go through the LEDs, the LED functions on this sensor would be just like a SAMS version of an inductive sensor or even a control monitoring sensor. All the LEDs will have that same functionality and be the same colors. Um, these sensors have been rated for IP67 and IP69K. And the reason I bring that up is these are what we're calling IP69K plus. So these sensors have been tested up to 1000 washdowns. These sensors are self-monitoring, uh, so it's going to provide a lot of useful diagnostics for you. And uh, at this point, we're going to go through these, and then I'll show you some of the functionality of these sensors using the uh, IO-Link connection. So as I mentioned, uh, these are photoelectric sensors. That's their primary function. It's just they also have the ability to do a lot more. So the first one of these sensors is the background suppression version. It has a sensing range of 250 millimeters. It has a red light, uh, laser red light uh, light source. Um, the outputs on these sensors are completely configurable. So they can be IO link, leave them on IO link if you like. They can also run an SIO mode. Uh, they can have outputs that are PNP, NPN, push pull, normally open, normally closed, however you would like to configure these sensors. The second member of this family is the retro reflective sensor. And it has a polarizing filters for applications where you might have shrink wrap or shiny objects that you need to be sure that you see the actual object. Um, the sensing range on these sensors are, is up to eight meters. And these use a standard red light as opposed to the laser. As I mentioned, the LEDs on here on these sensors and on all SAMS products are going to be consistent. Um, so in this case, there's two LEDs. Um, the first one closest to the sensor face uh, can be green. Static means that it's ready. If the green LED is flashing, that means you have IO link communication. If it turns red, then you have a failure. Um, the second LED has a lot of features to it, including some diagnostics, some red diagnostics if there's a failure. Uh, if maintenance is required, there's a blue LED, or the LED will, will be static blue. Um, if there's overloads, it will flash orange. Um, in addition, it has the ability to do a ping. So if you have a machine set up and there's a number of sensors on that machine and you want to find a particular one, you can, through iLink, you can ping that sensor. Uh, so that blue LED will start flashing, and you can configure that, that flashing duration to be up to 30 minutes. Okay, so looking at the software, this is device manager software that we have, and I'm communicating to the sensor through um, through the USB master. So one of the first tabs that I wanted to go through was identification. So this is going to give you all the information about the sensor, uh, hardware revision, firmware uh, version, and so forth. But a couple of the interesting things that you can do is you can actually come in here and put in uh, specific tag names if you like. So I could say this is on conveyor one. Uh, its function is uh, pusher 23 extended. And you can even put down a location if you want to. Again, here's that device discovery. So if I wanted to try to find that particular sensor, I could hit uh, start ping and that LED would start flashing. 
some of the parameters that you can set with this or with this family of sensors. Uh, the first one is you can teach the sensing range. Um, and there's a couple of ways you can do this. The first is a single value uh, or a single point. So it's just like a standard photoelectric sensor. If you would have a potentiometer, for instance, in this case, it's software driven. So I can just hit the teach set point and the sensor, you put your object in front of the sensor, it will look down there and determine what that sensing range is. And if you wanted to tighten that sensing range up, you can actually go in here and, and type in a new value. Your other choice is you can do a teach in two values. So basically you're teaching a turn on and turn off point. Um, another way that you can teach the sensor is what we call dynamic. So if you had a conveyor system set up, you could actually have product going by, start to dynamic teach, let it run for a certain period of time as product continues to go by, and then hit teach stop, and the sensor will configure itself for those objects. The other way that you can teach this sensor is manually. So uh, you can configure the M12 connector that has four pins. You can configure two of those pins to be basically whatever you want. And one of those functions is to be an input. So I can set that input up as a manual teach. So if you had a push button on a machine or you wanted the ability for the operator to press a button on an uh, HMI, you could have an output teach that sensor. The other function, some other very valuable functionality out of this is we can look at signal quality. So this is the signal quality quality of the LED. Um, it's starting out, it's going to be at 100% is the LED ages or something should happen. The signal quality may start dropping. It could be something like the lens is dirty or even maybe the reflector is dirty if you're using the retro version. The sensor operating mode, you can configure this. So you can set up the operating mode to be standard, which means it's just a standard on off the, uh, type sensor. Um, I can also go in and set it up to be a transparent if I have the um, retro reflective version and I'm trying to detect glass bottles or uh, clear, clear bottles. Um, I can set it up as transparent mode. I can also set it up in, in speed mode, which basically the sensor is going to process faster. Um, and then I can also do an enhanced detection mode, which is going to help if you have uh, ambient light that might be coming in through a window. The sensor also has the ability to do speed monitoring. Um, so I can monitor the, the input that I'm, this product's going by. I can monitor that input. I can also get status information, whether or not I'm at the upper limit of speed or if I'm going too slow, I can get that information. <clears throat> and I can also go in and set up signal de uh, delays. Uh, so um, I can have the delay the output as, as an on delay. I can set it up as an off delay, an on delay, off delay, or even just a uh, one shot. One of the other functions is external signal blanking. In this case, it's um, what this is used for is, again, if you have ambient light that you want to help the sensor to ignore, you can activate this uh, function. One of the really advanced features, I think, that's in this sensor is the fact that it has logic blocks. So the sensor has four built-in logic blocks, and you can have four inputs. You can take these inputs, you can AND them, you can OR, uh, exclusive OR. There's four functions that you can do with these blocks. You can take your four inputs, do the function that you want it to do, and then get your, your output. I can take that output of the first function block and use that as an input to the second function block if I so desire. So again, you have four of those, and each function block has four inputs. The sensor is constantly monitoring itself like all of the SAM sensors do. So in this case, the device status is OK if there was an issue with the with, say, the LED power starting to drop or over temperature, 
or vibration and so forth, you would actually, it would come up and tell you that the device is not okay, that it may need some maintenance or so forth. The application tags that I showed you earlier, the specific application specific tag, the function tag and the location tag are right here. So I could actually change those values here as well. There is the ping function. Uh, and I, again, I can set that up to 30 minutes. The other interesting function with this sensor, the, the way that you can configure this sensor is what we call a device variant. So with this, I can set the sensor up as what we call ADSS. And what this is, is it sets the sensor up as a standard sensor, one output. If I go to LSSC variant, I'm actually going to give the sensor the ability to have four outputs. So it's a four channel sensor. So with that, I can actually set up four individual outputs that I can look at internally. So you could use those in your function box, for instance. Um, you also have the ability to have the control monitoring variant and also the counting variant. As I mentioned, the, the sensor has an M12 connector, and you can configure the pins on that sensor however you like. So pin 4, I can set that up as an input, or I can set it up as an output. Uh, pin 2, the same thing. I can set it up as an input or an output. I can also set it up as an analog output. It's not an analog distance, uh, but basically I can look at counters, and I can put those counter values or uh, temperature values, whatever, I can set those up and put those out as an analog 4 to 20 milliamp analog signal, uh, even the vibration. There's approximately 37 different uh, functions you can look at. So again, you can look at vibration, you can look at temperature, humidity, uh, your speed counter, you can look at your actual counter itself. Again, there's about 37 different parameters that you can set up here. I can also go in and set up locks. I can lock the parameters. I can lock data storage if I want to. So there's four uh, various stages or levels of locking that you can do with this sensor. You can also reset it uh, four different ways. I can do a device reset. So it's not changing any of your parameters. It's just basically a warm reboot. I can reset an application. I can also restore uh, factory settings. Another one that's interesting is um, if the sensor determines that perhaps the its light is starting to, to degrade, or there's some function that, that affects maintenance and it needs to be addressed, uh, once you address those maintenance issues, you can come in and reset that. Again, it's got a counter built into it. Um, the counter operates two, basically two ways. It works as a static counter, which means you have to re manually reset it, or you can set it up as an automatic reset. In this case, I've set this counter up to uh, have a preset of 10. Um, you'll be, in this case, the, the status is I've exceeded it because I have a count of 43. So you'll notice it's a static, so I have to manually reset that sensor. One of the functions of the uh, control monitoring sensors is the ability to know the operating hours. So uh, you can set this up, or you, there's basically three counters in here. There's one of how long the sensor has been powered up totally. Um, there's also a custom version that if you want to set up so that after a certain period of time, you're going to get a flag to tell the operator to go clean the lens or or wipe off a reflector. Um, in addition to that, there's also one of how long it's actually been running since the last time you booted the, the uh, sensor up. There's a number of statistics that you, or you can actually do statistics with this sensor. Um, so if there's a, again, one of the 37 choices, um, you can go in there and say, okay, look at this uh, over, over voltage or over current or maybe vibration and do some statistics on that. And you can set up your, your average, you can set it up as moving average, average, uh, you can set up the number of samples, uh, how often 
Uh, you want to look at those samples in seconds and how many samples you want to look at. Again, going back to the control monitoring, I can look at the internal temperatures. So in this case, the internal temperature right now is 30 degrees, 38 degrees C. Um, you can set up your threshold so you can say, okay, if it gets down too low, set a flag. If it gets above a certain temperature, set a flag there as well. A very interesting uh, feature that this sensor has is inclination. So I can come in here and set up the enable the alarm and I can put in a threshold so this thing has the ability to once you mount it if the sensor should get bumped and knocked out of alignment and actually inclination of the sensor changes if it changes in this case above 10 degrees set an alarm um, you'll notice it also looks at the current status of it which in this case saying inclination is good um, you have to teach it. So in this case, we taught the sensor. This is what your location is. So in a minute here, I'll, I'll move the sensor and actually cause an inclination alarm. Uh, another feature of the control monitoring function is the vibration. So the sensor is going to monitor vibration. So if you have a, your machine uh, starts to develop some bad vibration, say a bearing's going out or there's something causing some sort of vibration. You can set the threshold on that. So if it gets too far out of uh, specification, you can get an alarm. Um, even in this case, say the sensor started to work loose in the mounting bracket and was vibrating, you can get an alarm out of that. And again, it's going to monitor the temperature of the, of the alarm or temperature of the sensor as well. And it also looks at the voltage and uh, current. So let's take a look at the diagnostics. Uh, so we're going to go back here to the generic tab. So you'll notice I've already got some alarms up here. So if I take the sensor and I, I lean it forward or change the inclination of it, I get an inclination alarm. Uh, there's a blue LED that comes up that's on. Uh, steady that tells me that there was some sort of error, in this case, inclination. And if there's a vibration, I'll start getting a vibration alarm as well. So as you can see, this sensor has a lot of functionality, a lot of configurability. Um, if you like a more detailed uh, demonstration, contact your BALF representative. And for more information on the sensor, visit www.balof.com.